the SADC Summit Preparatory Team, led by Deputy Executive Secretary for Corporate Affairs, Judith Katera, are in Zimbabwe for a four-day visit to assist the country's preparedness for the summit. Zimbabwe will host the 44th SADC Heads of State and Government Summit this August, where it will take over the chairmanship of the regional body from Angola. Judith Katera spoke to journalists on arrival at the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport earlier today. So we've come to meet with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. They are our hosts. So we are going to start working on the preparations for the hosting of this summit, which will be preceded by a number of meetings, like the council meetings and the industrialization week, where we're going to also invite private sector to be part of the process. So it's a preparatory meeting. And after that, nearer the time, we'll come again a SADAC to come and check the state of preparedness of the country. We now cross over to our political analyst, Ranga Matairi, to give us an analysis of what this all means. Ranga, it's a very good evening to you. Now, the SADC preparatory mission is important in determining the state of preparedness for the country holding the summit. What does this mean for Zimbabwe in the context of regional politics? I think um, the hosting of the SADAC regional summit um, is very critical in the context of regional uh, politics in that uh, it sends very positive you know um, sentiments um, not just regionally but internationally that one Zimbabwe has the capacity in terms of holding a similar um, uh, international summit but this is also not the first time that Zimbabwe has had the opportunity of hosting such a, a summit so uh, I have no doubt that Zimbabwe will be able to execute to host uh, heads of states and even a delegate to this. So it also is important because in, in the context of um, a lot of aspirations surrounding Zimbabwe in the aftermath of the elections, I think this is very important uh, to the world, to, to the continent and the region, uh, that Zimbabwe is part and parcel for the regional uh, uh, political matrix and that it is respected and that it um, it is respected because it adheres to the uh, principles of um, uh, democracy. Transport operators since October last year have been installing speed tracking and limiting devices for buses and heavy trucks. This is to comply with the law on speed limits. All public service vehicles, including buses, must now be equipped with speed limiting and monitoring devices to prevent speeding and enhance road safety. Our reporter Rachel Chasauka compiled the following report. According to statistics released by Simstat, 8,897 people died in road traffic accidents between 2019 and 2022. In the third quarter of 2023, 604 people died on Zimbabwe's roads, an increase from the 2022 aggregate. Most of the accidents are due to poor roads and speeding, a situation that has necessitated government intervention and the installation of speed limit devices. Lasti Kabudura, the CEO of Latrom, one of the safe providers licensed to install the speed limit devices, highlighted the cost involved. So I'd say basically we, we do have different standards of charging. Of course we've got one particular price, but basically our charge is $275 if it's uh, for uh, a speed limiter that is an electric pump. But for a speed limiter, that is a manual pump. What we're saying is something that cannot be manipulated by our system. We need to add additional accessories. That will cost the client about 325. He said speed limiters go a mile in reducing road accidents, but it is not enough. I feel that it will go a mile in reducing the accident, but not enough. The reason why I say that is what kills people is not 80 kilometers per hour. What kills people is not 100 kilometers per hour. Is sometimes speeding at 100 kilometers per hour at the wrong position. The Zimbabwe Netball Association over the weekend held trials for under 21 players as they started preparations for the future by selecting who will make up the squad that will represent the nation at the forthcoming African qualifiers set for Pretoria next month. We get more in the following report. Zimbabwe Netball Association Technical Director John Banda says his organization has started plans for the future as they believe that junior players have a role to play in cementing the netball legacy in the country. This comes after the year trials that saw over 150 athletes from the country's 10 provinces in attendance. 
Our trust here is to ensure that we do qualify for the World Cup uh, competitions which are taking place in Gibraltar, that is 2025. So we definitely need to, to qualify. And besides uh, qualifying, uh, we are saying the uh, under-21 team uh, is now our center of focus in the sense that this is where we, that's our future James team. Remember, 2027, we also have our World Cup qualifiers uh, being held in, in Australia. Konapo Konapo, Ipapo Ipapo, Pazetian Prime, DSTV Channel 294, the place to be.